Today we're talking about Puerto Rican aid, because it seems as though FEMA might have adapted a time heals all wounds mentality towards Puerto Rico's infrastructure issues. Puerto Rico is doing so badly right now, they might have to change their name to Puerto Pobre. So why are we talking specifically about Puerto Rican aid today? Because let me check the timestamp really quickly. Yep, we're talking about this in 2019. Well, there's an omnibus disaster aid bill that covers all the flooding in the Midwest and all of the other disasters that have occurred since January. And generally, this type of bill would be so mundane that it would pass before I could even have time to report on it. Fortunately for those of us who love drama, we live in the era of the Trump administration. Last night, the U.S. Senate failed to pass a wide-ranging disaster relief bill. Now, nearly a year and a half since Hurricane Maria, it is stalled over disagreements about Puerto Rico recovery aid. This fight has really spiraled out of control in the dumbest way possible. Spurring a Twitter flame war between Rick Scott and Chuck Schumer, the obligatory comically out their Trump claims, specifically, <coughs> Puerto Rico has been taken care of better by Donald Trump than by any living human being. Referring to yourself in the third person, Steven doesn't think that's going to get annoying quickly. They don't know how to spend the money and aren't doing so wisely. And not true. If you look at Puerto Rico's finances, they definitely know how to spend money. This of course led to the pinnacle point of Puerto Rico's governor talking about punching bullies in the mouth if they get too close. Basically, disaster aid right now is a disaster. Today I want to look at the core of this Puerto Rico aid debate holding back millions of Americans from getting their disaster relief. Nature's forces have battered the United States in the past half year. Storm winds, floodwaters, and deadly wildfire. To those natural disasters, now add a man-made one. First, a little background on the story. Because once upon a time, there was a Senate bill named S-572. And if that's too boring for you, this act may be cited as the additional supplemental appropriations for disaster relief 2019. Huh, man, am I the only one trying to make any of this interesting? In late February, the Senate introduced this $13 billion supplementary spending bill to provide relief for areas hit by recent Midwest floods, Hurricanes Florence and Michael, in the California wildfires. Yeah, Mother Nature's 2019 Greatest Hits. This bill gave $610 million to provide a grant to the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico for disaster nutrition assistance. But that's it. Democratic senators looked at that and said, yeah, that's not enough and blocked it. Then the Senate voted on a House approved disaster relief bill that included funds the House had authorized to bolster flood protection and repair the electrical grid in Puerto Rico. This bill got shot down by Republicans. This allocated hundreds of millions of dollars more for Puerto Rico than the GOP version. So maybe a tenth of the emergency border wall funding. With all that, we're at today. Waiting for relief, areas in Georgia and North Carolina hit by Hurricane Florence in the fall. Also waiting, large areas of California, where wildfires swept through last year, including the most costly in state history, which killed more than 80 people. This March, almost unprecedented flooding hit the Midwest, devastating both farmland and crops in storage. And all of that is being held up. So we find ourselves stuck in another shutdown-esque debate where Democrats are saying, give us more Puerto Rican aid, and Republicans are saying, no. All the while, all Americans suffer. The two main players who are vocally speaking out about this are New York Senator Chuck Schumer and Florida Senator Rick Scott. And the first question that is probably in most people's mind is, why so adamantly do you not want to give Puerto Rico this aid? You'd think the argument would be, well, they don't need it. But oddly enough, this hasn't really come up. Probably because no one wants to be arguing on the side of, no adequate access to electricity and water, that's the way our founders lived. Instead, the focus is on two issues. First, the efficiency of the money being spent in Puerto Rico, and second, a lot of states are waiting on this money. So if we could just pass this and then focus on Puerto Rico, that would be great. The efficiency of the money we spend in Puerto Rico is where the majority of Trump's focus is, saying, 
We have had a systematic mismanagement of the goods and services we've sent to them. You've seen food just rotting in the ports. Uh, their governor has done a horrible job. He's trying to make political the, hay in a political year, right. and he's trying to find someone to uh, to take the blame off of him so for not just, having a good a grid and not having a good system in that country. These are things. It is not hard to find examples of Puerto Rico really just doing a terrible job recovering from this hurricane. To the point where news reporters are actually starting to talk about George Bush's Katrina response like it's the golden standard. I mean, between the aforementioned 10 trailers of food, water, and baby supplies left to rot, as well as the much more expensive mistakes of Puerto Rico awarding the job of rebuilding the entire electrical grid to a two-man company out of Montana, and that company charged them double the regular wages for utility crew line workers, higher than normal daily meal rates, and required the Puerto Rican government to hire expensive charter planes to fly out equipment. Or the program that 60% of Puerto Rican FEMA funding went to. Specifically, a Puerto Rican Department of Housing program characterized by extravagant markups, overheads, and multiple levels of middlemen that all helped to create huge costs in the FEMA Finance Repair Program. When they say extravagant markups, they aren't kidding either. In case after case, a door worth about $50 would be billed to FEMA at perhaps $700. I mean, the Puerto Rican government is about as good as negotiating a deal as an American at a night market. Whoa, you're telling me this is a real Rolex? And only $250? Well, I'll give you $200 for it. Man, am I good at negotiating. Of course, people on the other side would quickly argue that Americans are dying and suffering right now, and they haven't had access to sufficient amounts of relief funds. The actual aid received by Puerto Rico so far is reportedly a fraction of that. The Washington Post called agency by agency and found about $11 billion has been sent. Another $30 billion has been approved, but not yet released or spent. That report might seem weird to you. I mean, why have they not spent three quarters of the disaster aid money yet? Well, it's because, unlike in the states, in Puerto Rico, FEMA is in charge of doling out the money as opposed to local officials. So FEMA's been sitting on about $30 billion, you know, watching it collect interest, maybe even filling a swimming pool with it. All that changed a few weeks ago when FEMA gave Puerto Rico the ability to spend those funds themselves, a move that should really cut down on that whole corruption problem. Of course, this came with new policies and controls that the people of FEMA say give them confidence in the new system. And you're probably asking yourself the exact same question I find I'm asking myself as I write this episode. If Puerto Rico is about to get the ability to distribute an additional $30 billion on their island, why are we fighting over whether to give them a few hundred million dollars for their island? I feel like I'm fighting over pennies with a trust fund kid. Well, what's actually at risk here is that $30 billion pool, because Trump's trying to stop payments on that check. The real threat is the idea of FEMA cost sharing, one of those things that talked about so little, but I can't even find a news clip to cut away to. Over the summer, FEMA denied a request from the island's governor for the federal agency to continue covering 100% of the cost of emergency work, including power restoration, debris cleanup, and other recovery efforts. They lowered that amount to 90% which would normally be acceptable, but Puerto Rico declared bankruptcy last year and they are flat broke. So access to those funds tightens up pretty quickly. You want that $30 billion? All of a sudden you're putting up $3 billion. Although, if they were paying 10% of that $700 door, we might have actually gotten a better deal. Democrats are pushing for any disaster aid bill to push that cost share back up to 100%. It's especially important because that number could get lower if, say, there was an acting Department of Homeland Security chief, the department that oversees FEMA, that really wanted to stay on Trump's good side. Democrats also want to expand the scope of what money can be used for. Right now, expenses that are not disaster related are ineligible for reimbursement. Now that might sound like the single most obvious stipulation you would want to put on any disaster relief funds. On the other hand, 
Democrats also want money to make structures more resilient to withstand the next major disaster. So that's the current status of the necessary disaster aid package to help people across the country. We'll see what happens with this disaster aid fight, and I just hope Americans all across this country are not left waiting too long to get that relief that they need. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the left of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.